guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. In today's video, I want to talk about hellebores. So you may have seen pictures of these flowers surfacing on the internet lately. On Facebook, on Instagram, you've definitely seen them if you're following me on any social media because they are one of the earliest blooming perennials and they happen to be one of my favorites and I've been trying to add to my collection. I've found some really gorgeous varieties. So I wanna go over a few points on how to care for them and a little more information about them. Uh, if you wanna learn about any of these points in particular, we will have them listed right here. So you can skip forward or you can stick around for the whole video. So let's just jump right in. So the first point is that their growing zone typically ranges from a zone four through a zone nine. I live in a zone five and they do really well where I live. Of course, there are a lot of different varieties and each one of them varies a little bit in growing zones. So you wanna check the plant tag before you put one in your garden. If you're unsure of what growing zone you live in, I'll put a link down below to where you can type in your zip code and find out what zone you're in. The second point is that hellebores are one of those wonderful perennials that can take part to full shade and still perform and flower beautifully. So if you've got a part to full shade area, uh, maybe somewhere like a woodland garden or a place that's underneath a tree or shaded by the house, these plants would do great in that spot. I have hellebores planted in an area that does get a little bit of morning sun, maybe till about noon, and they do really well. You just wanna make sure you protect them from the hot afternoon sun. The third point is watering. You wanna make sure to keep these very well watered in the spring and fall months because that's when they're most actively growing. You can ease up a little bit in the summertime because the heat does make them go dormant and the more established the plant is, the more drought tolerant they are. However, if you have a newly planted hellebore or if you live in an area with long, hot, dry spells, you wanna make sure to keep them consistently well watered. The fourth point is that they prefer soil that's rich, moist, but well draining. So you can add some organic matter or compost every once in a while when you plant them, maybe on an annual basis, work some compost in around them. They really like that. They also prefer a soil pH that's on the neutral to slightly alkaline side, which is very good for me because I live in an area with very high alkaline soil and that's probably why they do so well for us here. If you have more acidic soil, you can add garden lime to it to kind of help bring that pH up so that the plants are happy. And also, if you're planting hellebores in containers, just go ahead and use a really good potting soil. Don't use garden soil because even if your hellebores do really well in your garden, the soil doesn't act the same when you put it in a pot. It usually compacts and it doesn't drain properly. The fifth point is fertilizing. Don't forget to do it. They need food in order to perform and produce all of these gorgeous blooms. So I like to go out in early spring and give them an application of plantone, which is what I use on most all of my perennials, and then also a good layer of compost once a year. If you keep your hellebores in containers, you can use a liquid fertilizer as well. I'd probably use like a liquid bloom fertilizer when they're doing their blooming in the spring, and then in the fall months, I would use a liquid grow. In the summer, I don't think it's as essential to use fertilizer because they aren't growing actively. They're more in a dormant state. The sixth point is pruning, and these are actually a very low maintenance plant. Their foliage is evergreen, which is another reason why they're such a great plant to have because they look good for a huge huge part of the year. However, in the early spring, they can benefit from a little bit of a cleanup because some of their older leaves might look a little bit worn and tattered. So you can take those leaves and cut them back all the way back down to the stem and then you'll see new fresh growth emerging from the ground. Um, as far as bloom stalks go, when you have a stalk that looks kind of like this and all the flowers have bloomed and they're bloomed out and they don't look good anymore, you can clip the whole bloom stalk off at the base. So just follow it down to the base where it meets the bottom of the plant and clip it off. Now I do know of one variety of hellebore, it's called the bear's foot hellebore, that actually carries its blooms for the next year on its current bloom stalk. So don't cut that bloom stalk off if you have that variety. You wanna make sure to leave them, otherwise you won't have blooms the next year. The seventh point is pest and disease management. Now my hellebores are not affected by much. I've never had to deal with any kind of fungal disease. I've never had really any pest issues. Um, occasionally I'll see a slug or a snail. If you do see one of those around your plant, you can go ahead and treat around the plant with Sluggo Plus or Diatomaceous Earth both of which are organic means of pest management. The eighth point is dividing and transplanting. So hellebores rarely need to be divided, uh, but if it's something that you feel like you need to do, the best time to do that is in the fall. Same goes for transplanting. They are pretty fussy about being messed with though, so only do it if you feel it's absolutely necessary. My last point is on toxicity, and hellebores are toxic to kids, humans, and pets. However, I have a lot of hellebores in my garden and a cat and he never bugs them at all. I also grew up in a garden full of hellebores and we always had cats and dogs and they never bugged them either. I think animals kind of have a sense about this and instinct, but I think that's why the, this plant is labeled as resistant to deer, rabbit, and bulls. So if you deal with any of those, 
then this is a good option for your garden. So those are all the points I wanted to talk about today. If you have a friend that you think might be interested in hellebores and learning more about them, make sure to tag them in this video or share this with them. I think that this plant is so underused in the garden and we need to get more of them planted because they come up so early and they're such a treat this time of year that I just, I think you guys would enjoy having them in your garden. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.